Angelman syndrome is a rare neurogenetic disorder similar to autism, but many patients also suffer seizures that require a neurologist's care. At the Angelman Syndrome Foundation Scientific Symposium, Dr. Ron Thiebert discussed diagnosis and treatment of these patients. In patients with Angelman syndrome, the things that are universal in, in all children and adults are developmental delays, specifically with expressive language and speech, uh, a very happy um, demeanor, uh, lots of smiling, lots of, uh, lots of laughing, um, uh, uh, movement disorder, specifically um, imbalance, um, lack of coordination, ataxia. Um, and then uh, one of the things that's most common in kids with Angelman syndrome, up to 80 to 90 percent of, of all people with Angelman syndrome have seizures, which can often be very difficult to manage um, and, uh, and ir resistant to medications. Um, in addition to the seizures and the developmental issues, we also see problems with sleep, which can be pretty significant at times. We see lots of gastrointestinal issues, such as constipation and reflux. Um, we can, as time goes on, we can see orthopedic issues, specifically scoliosis or um, tight heel cords. What would be most notable on an EEG finding in Angelman's patients? So um, with Angelman syndrome, they all have a very characteristic EEG. One of the most common things we see is what we call notch delta. So it's um, very high voltage, 2 to 3 hertz activity, which has almost a notched appearance um, on the EEG, which is really just kind of sharp activity mixed in amongst the slowing. And this is really a very common signature um, of Angelman syndrome. And if you see that on an EEG, Angelman syndrome is something that you should really think about. Um, you know, these are often seen either very anteriorly or very posteriorly and can be confused as spike and wave discharges. But, but, um, but really, just kind of an Angelman variant. Um, on top of that, uh, you know, the really the epileptic activity we see on the EEG is more of a generalized spike in wave activity. And one of the things to really um, watch for Angelman syndrome is a lot of these children go into what we call non-convulsive status epilepticus, where they're not clinically seizing, but um, functionally they just don't interact as well, they don't communicate as well, they may not ambulate as well, they just don't look like themselves. So if that's ever the case, um, regression in Angelman syndrome is not part of the this, this syndrome. So if you see that, you need to get an EEG. And um, you could potentially be dealing with non-convulsive status epilepticus, which is present in up to 50 to 90 percent of kids with Angelman at some point or another. So seizures in Angelman syndrome can be especially difficult to treat. Um, most of these patients have um, multiple seizure types, so the most common are atonic seizures, which are often either head drops or full body drops, um, absent seizures, which are usually staring spells, um, generalized tonic-clonic seizures, um, and myoclonic seizures. Um, Patients can also have focal onset seizures as part of the syndrome. Um, and these uh, seizures are often very difficult to treat with medications. The broad spectrum um, anti-epileptic medications are, are the best. So um, anything in the benzodiazepine family is usually very good. Um, Clobazam is a medication now that it's been out, that's been used a lot. Uh, but the other broad spectrum medications are also very good, such as Keppra, Lamictal, Topamax, Banzel. Those are all very good medicines for these. What we also find is that dietary therapy is excellent in these kids. We've had um, several kids that we've put on dietary therapy, either low glycemic index treatment or the ketogenic diet. And um, we found that their response to the dietary therapy is much higher than even the regular epilepsy population. Um, so th this is potentially a very exciting treatment for, for these kids moving forward. Pretty much uh, movement disorders are universal in Angelman syndrome, with the most common being ataxia or, um, and tremor. And so um, most kids will have both, but some will have one or the other. Uh, the ataxia um, tends to get a little bit better as kids get older and as they become more ambulatory and get better muscle tone. Um, the tremor tends to worsen a little bit with age, and so um, usually after puberty this can become a little more problematic. Um, certain medications that can exacerbate that are, are Depakote, so that's one thing to kind of be careful um, in older kids because that medicine we've seen exacerbate tremor in a lot of older, older um, individuals. The other thing um, that can be very confusing with, with that is that a lot of, uh, we're seeing more and more, especially adolescents and young adults, have myoclonic status. So they actually um, will have constant myoclonic seizures for minutes to hours, and it can mimic um, tremor. But really, it's, it's seizure activity needs to be treated with with um, either seizure medication or dietary therapy. Uh, the the best way to differentiate it from, from a common tremor is just the episodic nature of it. it. has a definite start time, a definite end time. And while it's happening, the kids are, you know, they're awake and alert, but they're not just, they're not quite at their baseline. And so um, if these episodes are present, uh, um, and we think they're a lot more common than they're, than they're recognized, um, you know, the, they really need to be treated more as seizures than as, as movement disorders. And some of the medications we've had the best luck with are um, Keppra, Clobazam, Zonagran, uh, Depakote, and these, these have also responded really well to dietary therapy should the medications not be effective.
So the recent research is very exciting coming out of North Carolina, um, uh, coming out of Dr. Phil Potts' lab, where they've actually um, uh, been able to um, activate the inactive, um, uh, the paternal allele um, in chromosome 15Q. Um, and so um, potentially in the future, this could lead to a, a therapeutic type of medication. It's not yet in, in those stages, but, um, but it's, the, it's the first step in moving in that direction, which is very exciting to the Angelman community as a whole. For IMNG Medical Media, I'm Heidi Sleeve.